From a deep, dark sleep, I awoke in horror. For I realized that you must be needing another of my poetry readings. This week, we will tackle effective power. Yes, there is some math involved, but do not cower. Together, we shall work it through. You will see it is all about the skew. We shall consider N, or the index of refraction. Determine the meridian with the action. And soon enough, you'll have the perceived reaction. Of course, the lens itself does not change. That all takes place within the brain. As always here, it's understanding that we are working towards. So hey, let's head on over to the whiteboard. As always, thank you so much for viewing. You are the reason for all we're doing. Good morning! And yes, I know it might not be morning where you are, but I just haven't got to say that in a while, and here it is morning, so good morning! And I haven't got to say stuff lately either, but maybe I'll work it in there somewhere. A few weeks ago, we put up a video called Understanding Compensated Lens Design. Really popular video. I think it has the most views and the most shares of anything that we've done. If you have not seen it, by all means, head over either to our Facebook page or the YouTube channel and check it out. During that video, I popped up the formula for vertex distance compensation. Another one I popped up was the formula to calculate the perceived changes in lens power when we tilt the lens in the 180 or the 90th face form or uh, panto retro neutral. And what I want to do is pick up on that and actually work a simple example through so you get an idea of the complexity of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is let me pop that formula up again for you. And you'll notice that it's a two-part formula. So uh, again, like some of the stuff we've done in the past, don't jump ahead and don't think just because you've worked through all this complex math that you're done necessarily. This is actually a two-step process. First, we have to determine the new spherical power, which we use uh, the original sphere power for, the degrees of tilt, the index of refraction. And we work that all the way through, and then we can come up with the amount of cylinder, or perceived cylinder, created by the tilt as well. So let me get that out of the way. We're gonna take a very simple plus 12 sphere lens and we're going to tilt it 15 degrees and that lens is going to be made out of polycarbonate so of course it has an index of refraction of 1.586. I never ever hide behind the fact that I am not good at math. What I can take away from here is the concept, the idea. I can work through all of this and I can recognize that tilting a lens has a perceived effect on the lens power and I can come to a mathematical conclusion of how much that is for my brain. We're solving for our new spherical power, the perceived power of the lens once we tilt it. We need our original sphere power, which is our plus 12, we need the degrees of movement of the lens, and we need our index of refraction. But if we work this through, we plug in our 15 and hit our sign button, we end up there. If we square that, we end up here. This tells us that we need to multiply our index of refraction times two, which gives us the 3.17. Our new sphere power is equal to our old, multiplied times our one plus this divided by that. This divided by that equals that. That plus our one gives us this. And at last we arrive at our new sphere power as being equal to our original sphere power multiplied times 
O2. That gives us, we'll I'll get into a calculator, a new sphere value of plus 12.253. If I take a 12 diopter spherical lens, I place it in front of my eye, and I tilt that lens 15 degrees, my brain will now perceive that lens as being a full quarter diopter stronger than it is. All right, we got through part one. Let's go through part two, where we determine the amount of cylinder that will be perceived when we tilt that lens. Our perceived new cylinder amount is equal to our new sphere power, our plus 12.25, multiply times the tangent of our 15 degrees of tilt squared. If you plug 15 into a scientific calculator and hit the tangent button, you end up at 0.26. We're told we need to square that. We square it, we end up at 0.071. If I take my 1225 and multiply it times my 0.071, I end up at plus 0.879 almost a full diopter of cylinder is perceived or created in that lens by tilting it. Because the tilt is vertical, the power we started with is at the 90th panto retro neutral. The cylinder that is created is created 90 degrees away at 180 because it is the axis of rotation. It's this one that the, the lens is rotating around. So our cylinder is created at 180. The cylinder amount comes from the original power in that meridian. So I have a plus 1225, I end up with a plus 0.879. My cylinder value is a plus, that's where that comes from. What I do want you to take away from this, and this is really the whole point of this, of this lesson, is we take a very, very simple plus 12 spherical lens. No bells, no whistles, no coatings, not aspheric, nothing special about it, it's not free form. I place it in front of my eye and all I did was tilt that lens 15 degrees. That's it. And I went from the plus 12 to a plus 12.25 plus 0.87 at 180 degrees. The lens didn't change the power that I perceive the lens has is now this. That's just a simple spherical lens. <laughs> Imagine when you start throwing real cylinder into the script, that lens actually has two different curves on the back of it. Now take that a step further. Think about a progressive lens in a freeform design where the front surface may have variable base curve, where the back is an amorphous surface of multiple curves over the entire back surface of the lens. Imagine the math that it takes to calculate all the points on that lens at in vertex distance. Now you understand why it takes supercomputers to design these things. That is what I want you to take away from this. A little bit more thought about that compensated lens design idea just doing some editing work on this piece and I realized I never got to say stuff. So here is some stuff and it's some stuff you can actually use. The entire point of this lesson was that bending a frame, changing the position of the lens as it sits in front of your customer, changes their perception of how that prescription is working. They put them on and say, no, something's just not right. And they're looking around and they're doing this thing and this thing and they're taking them on and they're taking them off and they're putting on the old pair and they're like, no, something. Before you go jumping on the remake bandwagon, I just showed you the importance of bending. Don't rule out. Glasses are meant to have some face form and some panto. Grab those, give them a little bit more face form, give them a little bit more panto, that tilt in towards the cheek, Pop them back on and see if it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because it will. Never underestimate the importance of a little frame bending when doing your dispensing work. Never underestimate the importance of a little frame bending when doing your dispensing work. So that's my tip and my stuff for today. Hope that helps. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. Next week, really got something fun coming up. I know this one was a little dry. So, hey, I will see you next week and stay tuned. Thanks. <laughs>